Hello, it is 5 a.m. in Washington. It's 10 a.m. in London, noon in Cairo. I'm Onita Rajpal. You're watching World One live from London. Also ahead, the Green Bay Packers are the champions of American football. They sent the Pittsburgh Steelers to begin this hour in Egypt, where anti-government demonstrations are entering their third week. It is midday there as protesters head back to Tahrir Square. The crowds continue to oppose President Mubarak. The most powerful opposition group, the Muslim Brotherhood, was in on those talks with the Vice President. U.S. President Barack Obama says the Brotherhood is just one of many political options that Egyptians have. I think that the Muslim Brotherhood is one faction in Egypt. Well, Barack Obama there on what choices he thinks Egyptians will have come election time. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says President Mubarak... Take you now to Cairo's Tahrir Square, where we can speak to CNN's Ivan Watson. And let's, let's, let's talk about the protesters and the army there. Is this seemingly uh, some sort of a standoff still taking place right now? Well, that's right. The demonstrators refusing, despite some opposition groups... You can groups. definitely hear the traffic behind you instead of the chanting. From what we saw in the last few days, we're hearing traffic as well. Ivan Watson in Cairo, thank you so much. Well, let's see what newspapers around the world are saying about Egypt and Australia. The Age has a headline, Mubarak likely to hang on during the transition. The paper says, according to Zakaria Abdelaziz, a former head of Egypt's Judges Club... Now, in Israel, the Haaretz newspaper, their headline is saying, Egypt is not Gaza, the Muslim Brotherhood is not Hamas. The Egyptian people, it goes on to say, are a proud, modest people, which has never been in the thrall. And then in the UAE, the national, the headline there saying, Egypt shows that there can be no stability without dignity. Notable in all of the tributes to Mr. Mubarak by Western leaders was that none had any reference to Egyptian governance. Finally, in Turkey, the Zaman, in the today's Zaman, the boiling point in the Arab world. No matter how much the U.S. may not have played any role in triggering this, it watching will... World One live from London. In the U.S., the biggest football game of the year has fans in the Midwest, perhaps across the country, cheering. Even before the big game began, some fans had a big, ups big reason to be upset. Despite having tickets in hand, there was no place for them to sit. No seats. No seats. Wow, I would be really, really mad if Those that was me. Those guys have paid $800 for each ticket. The NFL says they're going to refund them to the tune of three times that amount, but they're saying even that That's isn't point, enough. Yeah. When you can, well, not the point, they missed the game, but when you consider the hotel and the, yeah. uh, the travel and the In the, the snow conditions as well. Yeah. They're out oh. of pocket, and they missed it. How was the game, though? If you're a Packers fan, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the Green Bay Packers won the first two Super Bowls Each back in... Each the word song. Uh -huh. Now, the Super Bowl wouldn't be the Super Bowl without some sort of gas. Now, we what had... was it this time? Remember Janet Jackson, the wardrobe malfunction? How could, How I, forget? A... How could I forget that one? <laughs> How about a lyric malfunction? Christina Aguilera was tapped... Well, she did sing the national anthem, uh, and she, of course she sang it to millions of fans. But take a listen to this. Says she got lost in the moment and lost her place. But credit to her, Manita, she kept her clothes on. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> but she looked, actually, you know, she looked really good. She did not flinch at all. Mm -hmm. Tom, thank you very much. This is World One, live from London. People of Australia are suffering again at the hands of the elements. Two huge wildfires are raging in the southwest of the country. It is the latest in a series of disasters. Well, let's get a look at the weather in Australia. Now let's turn to our meteorologist Jennifer Delgado at the World Weather Centre. And as the lady just said there, you know, how much more can the Australians take? But in this condition, when we're talking about fire, weather plays a huge role. How's it looking over there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the weather is actually improving. I want to point out to you, the winds right now... All right, Jen, thank you for that. You're watching World One live from London. When we come back, is Egypt's capital back in business? A trial of three U.S. hikers is expected to continue in the next few weeks. On Sunday, not guilty pleas were reportedly entered for the three defendants, including Sarah Shore, who's out on bail and being tried and tried in absentia. CNN's Susan Candiotti has more on that. Let's take a look at uh, what's trending on social media, like Twitter right now. At uh, number three, a group on commercial broadcast uh, during the Super Bowl is taking some flack. Lots of people on Twitter are saying they found the company's use of humor on Tibet to be tasteless. Take a look at this. Very culture is in jeopardy. Number two, this gentleman right here, Irish guitarist Gary Moore, he has died at the age of 58. Moore was best known as a member of the rock band Thin Lizzy, remember them? Well, he was found dead in a hotel room in Spain. And then at number one, this young lady here, uh, the Super Bowl was 
not so super for Christina Aguilera. She got her words mixed up when she was singing the national anthem. She should have said, or the ramparts, ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. But she mixed it up with an earlier line, and it came out, what so proudly we watched at the twilight's last reaming. Take a listen to this. Well, Aguilera says she got lost in the moment and lost her place. I guess with billions of people looking at you. And his lawyers face a tough task today. The WikiLeaks founder is in a London courtroom trying to beat an extradition request from Sweden where he is wanted for questioning in a sexual misconduct investigation unrelated to WikiLeaks. Atika Schubert is outside the London courtroom where the two-day hearing is taking place. Atika. Well, basically, this is the start of his extradition hearing, and this is where his lawyers will basically lay out uh, their Schubert argument. in London. Thank you so much. You're watching World One live from London, zipping around on Air Force One, rubbing shoulders with celebrities, making decisions that change the world. It's easy to think of things that are good about being the president of the United States. But World One live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We want to leave you with pictures taken by one of our eye reporters in Egypt. Scenes of hope and determination captured in Tahrir Square over the past two weeks.